My name is uh, Fuat Kayman. Uh, I am uh, working in Istanbul, uh, Sabancı University. Uh, I'm the professor of international relations uh, in that university. Uh, there is a think tank, uh, Istanbul uh, Policy Center. Uh, I am also the director of, of, of that center, uh, mainly working on uh, globalization, Turkey-EU relations, democratization and civil society development in Turkey and the region. It's more than a synonym with uh, diversity. Of course, our societies, our uh, uh, world uh, is globalizing, and the more globalized uh, it is, the more uh, pluralistic, the more diverse it becomes. Uh, and our countries are uh, diverse and becoming more and more diverse. For instance, where I live right now, Turkey is a quite a pluralistic and diverse society. But uh, if you ask me if Turkey is a really a pluralistic society or if pluralism uh, is a shared value, uh, is kind of a, a policy by which the state governs uh, society, my answer would be yes and no. And uh, so, so in this sense, uh, diversity and uh, societies become uh, pluralistic is kind of a sociological condition. But uh, by pluralism, I mean uh, a set of uh, institutional uh, practices, governing norms, and living together rules and norms uh, by which uh, society is uh, governed. Uh, so, so in this sense, it is much more uh, rule-based, uh, norm-based uh, idea, uh, pluralism. Most in, important driver, uh, of course, we have to make a distinction between uh, advanced uh, democracies or ad economically advanced societies and, uh, you know, emerging markets or developing societies. But uh, if the state, uh, in terms of uh, governing, uh, is uh, inclusive, then the society becomes uh, more pluralistic. Meaning that, uh, for instance, uh, all societies uh, have uh, some sort of appeal and commitment to uh, equality, pluralism, inclusiveness in the text, constitutionally or, 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 or in their regulations and law. But uh, that doesn't mean very much because we know that uh, what matters really actually is uh, the way in which those inclusive, uh, pluralistic uh, commitments are implemented. And if the state uh, and if those, when uh, those uh, actors governing society are really uh, committed to inclusiveness and accommodation uh, in terms of implementing uh, laws and regulations, then we have actually uh, a more pluralistic society. Uh, but also uh, in terms of uh, culture uh, of uh, living together or uh, coexisting. Uh, if, if, if actually uh, uh, there is an internalization of democracy, internalization of pluralism uh, by people in the society, that, uh, that, that people do not trust only uh, those who are alike, but uh, try to trust people, those who are different, then of course uh, we have a a better pluralistic society, but even in the realm of uh, living together, in the realm of culture, if uh, the state and the governing actors uh, help uh, this realm to develop itself, to enhance uh, the culture of living together, then we have a, a better uh, inclusive accommodating uh, society. So I pay attention to institutions, uh, governing actors, uh, state structures, uh, really committing themselves to uh, not only a textual, rhetorical uh, uh, understanding of uh, pluralism, but uh, implementation uh, of it in, in their uh, uh, actual way of governance. The greatest obstacles, uh, of course, uh, uh, if, uh, uh, for instance, uh, from uh, 
In my own country, Turkey, I could actually give an example, but uh, this example can be multiplied in, uh, and can be observed in different parts of the world. If uh, the majority identity or uh, the majority group uh, try to uh, hegemonize itself, try to establish its dominance over minorities, over the rest of the society, then of course uh, we have a big uh, hindrance towards uh, actual meaning of pluralism as a uh, you know, sort of a value and a norm of uh, living together. So, so in this sense, there has to be some sort of balance between uh, majority identity and minorities. Secondly, uh, if the state uh, and state structure is stronger than uh, society, meaning that uh, you know, in a situation where civil society actors, economic actors are not really uh, well developed, are not really functioning, are not really uh, creating some sort of impact on uh, government structures, then uh, we have a, a actually a hurdle uh, to, to, to pluralism. And thirdly, uh, and, and, and recently uh, becoming more and more apparent, if uh, the government's uh, choice in governing is uh, totally uh, market and economic rationality over uh, society at large or what is good for society at large, if there is a privileging of uh, pure uh, market and economic rationality over uh, you know, goods for society, then, uh, then we have a, also an obstacle hurdle to, uh, to pluralism uh, in, in, in society. So, uh, so, so in this sense, uh, I would actually see uh, you know, the hurdles and obstacles. First, uh, hegemony and dominance of a majority culture over minorities, second, uh, the uh, strong state over, over society, weak uh, civil society and, and economic uh, society structure, and then third, uh, privileging of uh, market and economic, pure market and over, uh, economic rationality over what is good for society, what is publicly good for society at large. Uh, you know, uh, uh, when we look at uh, the sources of conflict uh, or uh, sources of violence, uh, we know that uh, poor people uh, do not commit to violence. Poor, poor people or, or actual poverty is not uh, the main uh, reason for conflict uh, or, or, or violence. What is more important is uh, the discrepancy, uh, unacceptable uh, discrepancy or disjuncture uh, between uh, certain segments of society uh, and the larger society as a whole in terms of uh, access to uh, uh, welfare, access to uh, certain uh, needs and, uh, and also uh, sharing prosperity. If there is a big uh, disjuncture between uh, the rich and the poor, if the uh, small uh, group of, of or segment of society shares uh, or or has big uh, proportion of uh, wealth and and and, and well-being and resources in, in in society, then of course uh, that triggers and uh, that that causes conflict and and and, and violence. So so in this sense, uh, one of the reasons why I actually. Uh, uh, chose that that question uh, is that uh, uh, it is not uh, the, the existing of uh, poor people or the existing of uh, those who are not really uh, having equal access to uh, resources, uh, needs, so on and so forth, but uh, the increasing uh, disjuncture, uh, injustice in society that is the big uh, you know, hindrance to uh, pluralism. So, so in this sense, uh, in order for societies to be really pluralistic, in order for societies to be governed really by the uh, institutional uh, settings and norms of pluralism, then we have to have a balance between rich and poor, 
we have to a balance between uh, certain different segments of society in terms of sharing prosperity, access to uh, needs and so on, welfare, so on and uh, so forth. In that sense, there is a <coughs> relationship between economic or uh, material well-being and uh, the sustainable uh, nature of, 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 of pluralism uh, in a given society or in our globalizing world at large. Uh, there, uh, again, actually, uh, since I'm from Turkey and uh, in Turkey we have a big uh, Kurdish question, uh, we have a big uh, Alawite question, and the governments uh, have been tackling with these questions and, uh, and these uh, minority questions and the way in which uh, the state's uh, mistreatments of, 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 of minorities have been the main causes of uh, instability uh, and weak uh, living together culture in, in, in Turkey. Uh, I would say that uh, from, uh, from the perspective of Turkey, there is definitely a good uh, and uh, important uh, connection between the way in which state governs society and treats minorities and, 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 and the uh, existing uh, performance and sustainability of good performance of pluralism. Meaning that uh, in recent uh, years, uh, the Turkish state has changed uh, its uh, way of looking at minorities, uh, way of coping with, with minority questions. Uh, we have a reconciliation process with, with, with the Kurdish uh, pe people or our Kurdish uh, citizens. And this reconciliation process, this peace process has been uh, going uh, okay, despite some, some, some problems. Of course, uh, the state has to uh, make an, or had to make a number of uh, reforms uh, in terms of uh, language rights, in terms of uh, you know right to uh, media in our own language, uh, in, in terms of uh, participation in political life, so on and so forth. So, so in this sense, uh, uh, we realized last uh, at least two, three years that uh, the more inclusive the state is towards minorities the more stable and the more peaceful the society can become. So, so in this sense, uh, there is no uh, negative causality uh, between uh, nationhood and uh, minority question or, or lack of pluralism uh, in, in, in society, uh, theoretically speaking. Uh, of course, uh, what matters is actually the choice of the leaders. Uh, what matters is how institutions uh, work in terms of not majority but minority. Of course, when you put majority and minority, you get society as a whole. So in this sense, choices matter. And, 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 and Turkey uh, made the wrong choice for a long time, and which actually created a, a big uh, a trauma in, in society, psychologically, in terms of human tragedy, economically, so on and so forth. But the uh, last couple of years, uh, within the context of the Kurdish question, to some extent the non-Muslim minority question, the state uh, seemed to have the right choice uh, to be inclusive, to be reformist, uh, in terms of uh, the prob tackling with the problems of the minorities. And uh, so far, the uh, last two years, we didn't have uh, martyrs uh, coming from the uh, conflict. Uh, from both sides, uh, we didn't have a real conflict, uh, you know, in, in the society. Everyday life became more secure. People start, uh, you know, looking at their tomorrow and, and the near future more uh, confidently. So, so in this sense, uh, I would say it is a matter of choice. And 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 uh, and if the state, so there is no uh, sort of a. Uh, you know, uh, theoretical incompatibility between the nation state and the minority question. Nation state could make uh, right choices, and if they make right choices, then they could create actually stability and uh, uh, sort of better uh, culture of uh, living together, which is the uh, other way of uh, calling uh, that society pluralistic. You know, it's, uh, it depends on how to use technology. And uh, of course, uh, you know, one of the clear, uh, visible uh, dimensions of what we call globalization uh, is uh, technological advances in uh, communication and information. 
And of course, the world is really global village right now through, uh, you know, iPhones and Facebook and so and so forth. Uh, you know, we have actually uh, narrowed the uh, geographical uh, distances. So, so uh, there's a huge geographical uh, change in the world. So the world got smaller, and, and in that sense, uh, it would. It, ha it has become more and more possible to move from one place to another. So, so in this sense, uh, yes, globalization has uh, made our world much more diverse, much more pluralistic. And, uh, you know, uh, uh, technology has uh, contributed uh, to it uh, immensely. But uh, again, uh, if that sociological uh, uh, in a way, ontological, uh, you know, uh, diversity, uh, leading to uh, a better society, a uh, more stable society, or uh, helping us to be more confident about ourselves, ourselves today and tomorrow. Uh, of course, that's a big uh, question uh, to, to, to tackle with, and uh, there is no one answer. It might be yes. Uh, but it might be wrong. And right now, when we look at the world, uh, no question uh, appears to be uh, the correct question because, uh, yes, the world is becoming smaller, but, uh, you know, insecurities, uh, uncertainties, ambiguities, risks uh, are multiplying. You know, uh, we have actually a much more unstable world uh, in terms of uh, economy, uh, you know, like sort of uh, the, the poverty level is 47 percent, unemployment level is, is actually getting higher and higher. And of course, uh, there are new actors uh, in, in the, you know, on the table, China, India, Brazil, Turkey, South Africa, emerging markets, new guys on the block, but that is not creating stability, there's always conflict. And, uh, you know, right now when we are doing this, uh, interview uh, where I come from, Turkey, uh, our uh, southeastern border, uh, you know, uh, is actually a, a border that separates uh, Turkey from Syria and Iraq. And, and in Syria and Iraq, we have uh, new guys on the block uh, called ISIS, uh, terrorists, brutal and everything. So, so in this sense, uh, you know, uh, they are televising it. They are actually sending their, uh, their uh, you know, grotesque executions uh, everywhere through social media. So, 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 uh, so the shrinking world uh, does not mean a nicer, uh, better, uh, more stable world. So globalization uh, sociologically make diversity much wider uh, and much deeper. But on the other hand, uh, going back to the first question, is this globalization uh, contributing positively to much more uh, pluralism uh, as a way of governing uh, societies or governing the world? Uh, right now, uh, realistically, I would say no, but uh, normatively, I would say I wish.